Hi, my name is Pedro Bertoletti, and today I will talk to you about making a robust FU OTA process in SP32 microcontrollers. This presentation is made on behalf of Instituto de Pesquisas Eldorado. After this presentation, you will understand the importance of FU OTA process in embedded solutions development and how to make it uh, when adding more uh, the rollback feature to it. Before starting this presentation itself, I will give you some information about my working experience. I work as a technology consultant in Instituto de Pesquisas Adorado here in Brazil. I have more than 15 years of experience uh, in embedded disk software development and IoT solutions so, uh, development for several areas using SP32 in great part of these solutions. Also, I'm the author of two books about embedded systems and IoT, and I often publish uh, in these areas in blogs and magazines in Brazil and overseas. Also, I would like to talk briefly about a company I work for, Instituto de Pesquisas Eldorado, or IP for short. IP is one of the greatest research institutes here in Latin America, based in four strategic cities, uh, which are Brasilia, Porto Alegre, Campinas, and Manaus. IP works in the state-of-the-art research and development solutions for the most of the major companies around the world, including the segments of embedded systems, IT, oil and gas, and so on. Here's the agenda for today. Uh, I'll start by talking about the importance of the remote firmware update process, or FU OTA for short. Then I will explain what FUOTA read rollback are. Uh, also, I will show uh, why rollback is a must have feature for an embedded systems development. Getting deeper into the FUOTA with rollback together, I will show this can, how this can be done in S32 microcontrollers. And in order to put everything together, I will give you a demonstration using FUOTA and rollback in the SP32 microcontrollers. At the end of this presentation, I will also show you the references used for uh, composing this presentation. First thing first, let's check why FUOTA is so important for embedded device development. Let's imagine a classic usage of embedded systems for a company where devices are placed in the field and they are responsible for collecting very important data for a specific operation. This collected data will uh, reach high-level systems and it will be processed too, in order to be able to extract valuable information from them, which will base important decision-taking and management decision-taking in this particular company. Therefore, the embedded systems in this scenario plays a major role in the whole company uh, operation. However, nothing's perfect. These embedded devices are uh, using embedded softwares. And as we know, any kind of software can present bugs and malfunctions at some time. Uh, software issues are sometimes not previsible, and so they are inevitable. Uh, and this can get a little worse. Uh, the embedded device uh, can present security flaws too. Uh, these security flaws can cause a lot of damage uh, from devices getting overtaken by hackers or something like that, causing the, uh, data leak or intentional malfunctions, or even false or intentionally false data inserted or injected into the system, uh, affecting everything here in this operation. The impacts of these uh, problems, of these issues caused, um, will be felt all over the data chain. For example, as a consequence of false or missing data uh, in, in this whole data chain, uh, all information extracted from this data won't be valid anymore, won't be reliable, and directly impacting the management decisions, the operation themselves, and last but not least, the incomes from this company. In this scenario, multiple losses are expected. Clients will be unsatisfied with the client service provided by this company. Then the company reputation will get worse and will put clients off. And then some clients will give up this company and will get similar service from their concurrents. 
To sum up, this company will be, will be very negatively affected as a whole. Well, truth be told, this can turn into a nightmare. The solution, the solution here for this case is called firmware updates over the air, or FUOTA for short. Once this company identifies the issues, the problems, and manages to fix them, uh, and having the possibility to uh, update these embedded devices in the field over uh, local networks or even internet, uh, it could resolve all these problems in all device add-ons, reducing the impacts and uh, of these issues of these problems into the whole company operation. Let's have a look now how FUOTA can solve to help these issues. First, FUOTA allows microcontrollers to upload their own firmware over local network or even internet, as said before. This can happen periodically, under demand or when microcontrollers face critical issues. Uh, second item, uh, no human intervention is necessary during the FUOTA process. It means uh, it results in an affordable process for uploading several devices at the same time. And finally, in general terms, FUOTA doesn't take much time to occur. What make uh, make it? Uh, what means less than downtime of this device in the field? Now let's move on. Uh, checking what rollback means and why rollback is a must-have feature for FUOTA process. In this section, I will show you what a rollback process is, how the S32 partitions are used for FUOTA and rollback process in this microcontroller, and also show you how rollback works in FUOTA process in S32 microcontrollers specifically. Rollback is a feature to ensure microcontroller will always work with the last stable firmware version uh, flashed in it. Okay. Uh, if the most recent updated uh, firmware presents critical problems uh, and get unable to boot properly, for example, the rollback firmware will automatically force from microcontroller firmware back to the last stable firmware version flashed in it. This prevents device from getting bricked or for getting unusable at the field after a bad firmware update. Uh, furthermore, rollback process doesn't require any human intervention too. Now, let's time to check uh, how S32 flash memory partitions are organized to make a FUOTA process and rollback work. Here is the typical flash S32 flash uh, partition scheme uh, used for S32 microcontrollers, which count on FUOTA process and rollback features. Please observe these uh, three highlighted partitions in red here at the left side of the, the image, factory, ODA1, and ODA0. The factory partitions contain a firmware factory, uh, which is the very first firmware flashed to the S32. Um, this firmware flashing, or this firmware factory flashing, is usually flashed when the device is under manufacturing process in the manufacturing line, assembly line. Then, Two partitions dedicated to store firmware received during the FUOTA processes are shown, which are OTA0 and OTA1. Both are required in order to make possible to for a rollback to have enough firmware versions to work for, and uh, to be able to force the less stable firmware version when uh, the S32 faces critical issues. Also, please pay attention to the highlight partition sides in red in the right side of the image. As all highlighted partitions will be used to store firmers, they must be able to support firmers with the same maximum size. This is why uh, there are three uh, partitions here of the same size, in this case, four megabytes. It means that this S32 is ready to handle firmers to with size up to four megabytes. Now it's time to check on how, how FUOTA with rollback feature works on S32 microcontrollers. First, let's assume 
uh, the device is having microcontroller firmware flash for the first time, which means firmware is flashed in factory partition. Uh, it's important to mention that uh, the firmware partition can only be flashed over serial interface, and FUOTA process cannot overwrite this factory partition content. Okay, so from now on, all FUOTA process will overwrite or will use only OTA1 and OTA2 partitions. Then, after flashing firmware to the factory partition, S32 boots for the first time. Uh, the flash, the firmware flashed in factory partition will be loaded. Bootloader will point to it, and as bootloader uh, point to it, and uh, in no new firmware flashed, uh, every time fla uh, factory partition firmware will be loaded. But after the first FUOTA process, things will change. The firmware received in the FU OTA process will be flashed in the OTA1 partition. And if this firmware presents no critical problems, the OTA1 partition will be marked as valid partition, as you can see here in the image. Then, bootloader will now point to the OTA1 partition when S32 boots, and making this firmware flashed in OTA1 partition to be executed to run S32 from these uh, boots. To, to the next boots if nothing more happens. But let's check uh, what happens after the second FUOTA process when new things change too. The firmware received in FUOTA FU process now, and the second time, will now flash to the OTA2 partition. And if this firmware presents no critical issues, uh, the OTA2 partition will mark it as valid, as you can see in the image. Then, as, as happened before, OTA, uh, the bootloader reports now to the OTA2 partition when S32 boots, and the firmware flash in this partition will be executed by S32. After the third FU OTA process, the cycle starts to repeat itself. The firmware received in the FUOTA process uh, will be flashed in the OTA1 partition this time. And if the firmware presents no critical issues, the OTA1 partition will be marked as a valid partition, as you can see in the image. Then, bootloader will now point to OT1 partition when as third to boots. And this, the firmware flashing in this partition will be used now on. To sum up, Few FU OTA process works as shown in figure in the center of the screen. Uh, after the FU OTA process, the receiver the firmware will, start, will be stored in OTA1 partition, and the bootloader point to this OTA1, OTA1 partition. Then OTA1 and OTA2 partitions alternate themselves as partitions containing the firmware received in FU OTA process. And uh, the bootloader alternates to between them to point uh, to which partition will be used to load F, uh, the firmware as S32 will run. Now, let's check some error cases when nothing, uh, when something wrong happens. What happened after uploading a bad firmware to S32 in, this, uh, in its first FUOTA process? Well, in this case, rollback kicks in. Uh, OTA1 partition will now be marked as a valid partition, as you can see in the, the image on the right side of the screen. And rollback uh, will take action and force the less stable firmware version to be run in S32, which means the firmware flash the factory partition in this case. Let's move on and suppose a bad firmware is uploaded in the second FUOTA process of this microcontroller, this particular microcontroller. Again, rollback kicks in. Now, firmware will be flashed in OTA2 partition. This partition will be marked as invalid, as you can see in the image, and rollback mechanism will force the less stable firmware version to be executed in SPR2, which means the firmware flashed in OTA1 partition. And finally, to complete the rollback cycle, let's suppose a bad firmware is received or is uploaded in the third FUOTA process. 
it works the same way as we've seen before. Uh, a rollback kicks in, uh, OK1 partition will be marked as invalid partition, and uh, for a rollback will force the last stable firmware version, which is the firmware store, the OTA2 partition, and rollback uh, completes its work. Then uh, it's possible to observe rollback always will keep my controller running a stable firmware, uh, preventing my controller from getting brickets or unusable at the field. Now, let's check how rollback um, are used in FU OTA process in for S32 microcontrollers, particularly. Well, for this, the first thing to do is enable the rollback feature in S32. Uh, this can be done in menu config of the S32 pro project you are working on at the moment. In order to enable the rollback feature in S32, please check the option called Enable App Rollback Support, as you can see in the image on the right side of the screen, and uh, in the bootloader config menu then uh, S32 will be ready or be prepared to use rollback feature. The next step to do is to mark partitions OTA1 or AOTA2 as valid partitions. Every firmware received in FU OTA process in S32, microcontroller must mark its current partition as valid. Uh, it can be done by calling this function highlighted in blue which is ASP order mark app valid cancel rollback. This action must be taken in a place in the firmware source code that indicates all critical operations have been successfully done. It's very important to mention that OTA1 and OTA2 partitions are marked as invalid per default after FU OTA process. It's a default behavior. Then if these partitions OTA1 and or OTA2 aren't marked as valid by the firmware with which they are hosting, uh, and if uh, S32 reboots for any reason before marking these partitions are as valid, rollback will force the last stable firmware version to the S32, which means the recent uploaded firmware won't execute in S32. Therefore, uh, you always uh, need to ensure to call this function uh, highlighted in blue here uh, when everything worked fine in firmware. Now let's check how few FU OTA and rollback uh, can work together in a demonstration. I will show you here. For this demonstration, I'm using uh, the dev kit from TTGO called T7 uh, S3, which contains uh, S32 S3 microcontrollers with uh, 16 megabytes flash. Also, from a uh, hardware perspective, I use a USB-C cable to program the S32 and uh, source uh, to, to deliver power source for them. And from source, uh, from software perspective, this demonstration was developed to use SP30, SPIDF version 4.4 and the official expressive plugin for VS Code. Well, let's start the demo. Here's the source code for this demo. Okay, let's start this, this by demonstrating uh, the main points of this source here in the main.c and app main function, which is the fun first function uh, executed in this firmware and makes all initializations and so on. Okay, uh, as an initialization, uh, you can see here, the one of the first things it, uh, it does is to print the current firmware version, as you can see here in the debug messages. So it's possible to see that uh, this version is 1.0. And checking to partitions uh, scheme, you can see that uh, as this firmware has been uh, right, and it has been uh, flashed over serial interface, uh, it, it is stored in factory partition, which uh, offset is this number. And uh, getting 
this message, we can see that offset for the current versions is the same. Yeah, it's the same offset. So we have a confirmation that uh, this firmware is also stored in factor partition. Okay. So moving on to the code, the first thing it does is to init NVS uh, and briefing light routines. Briefing light it's a uh, led here in the dev kit that blinks demonstrating the desperate two is running successfully. Okay. So it's uh, just a light that indicates everything's running okay. Then from this point on, uh, the OTA related stuff, related code starts to, to run. Uh, this particular function here, as per init, as per to OTA, uh, is responsible to, for initializing the S32 OTA routines. Then after this, Wi-Fi is initiated. Uh, Wi-Fi is initiated here in this function called Wi-Fi init STA, which initializes Wi-Fi in station mode, connecting the S32 here uh, in a router I have here near my S32. And uh, it's impossible to mention that my computer is also connected to the same router and the same network as S32 is. Then this means my computer can reach S32 as we will see a uh, few steps further. Well, still here in this uh, main.c file, we can see that uh, uh, the next step to do is uh, as the current partition is marked as valid, okay? As we are working here in this particular case with a factory partition, uh, firmware flash to factory partition, uh, this mark won't, uh, won't be possible to do. But in the next case, when OTA process or FU OTA process will be done, uh, we, we can see that uh, this can be done successfully. okay? So after marking the partition as valid, everything works from the tasks created in these uh, functions here, which is the briefing light, the OTA and STA. It's important to mention that uh, when Wi-Fi starts, as you can see here, sorry, I'm getting the events. Okay, uh, when Wi-Fi starts and uh, the handler events are called, I'll, I'll get to it right now. Oh, here, when uh, Wi-Fi successfully connects, uh, a TCP server socket is initializing in S32, which means S32 will behave as a TCP server socket to receive the firmers, okay? Now, let's take a deep look. Let's take a look uh, on how the server TCP server works and interacts with FU OTA process. Everything starts in the initialization function, which is here. Uh, this function starts the, the task uh, dedicated to handle the, the socket server TCP, which is called socket TCP server task. And uh, this task does everything regarding sockets, which means initialization then, uh, setting the port, setting the... Uh, IPv4 parameters and everything. And also is, uh, this uh, function, this test store will uh, listen or waiting for a client. And in this case, the client is our my computer here, which will send firmware to S32. Uh, it's important to mention that uh, for this project particularly, uh, every data chunk sent to SP32 through this socket connection will consider it a firmware chunk. Um, this is okay for this demonstration. This is okay for here, but uh, in a real world project, it's highly recommended to implement uh, some sort of communication protocol or communication rule to manage preventing uh, no firmware chunks to be considered as firmware chunks, okay? So here is a demonstration only, but uh, you'll know what to do when does the, doing this in a real world project. 
Well, once socket client is uh, sent some data to this uh, server side, which is our S32, the order process starts, okay? Which can be is done uh, here. If there's some firmware chunk uh, and receiver bytes are, oh, are uh, higher than zero, then OTA processes starts. Uh, it's important to mention that uh, these firmware chunk sizes are up to um, 1,023 bytes, okay? And these uh, firmware chunks are, stored, are temporarily stored in this buffer right here. I get it for you. Um, it's a buffer here. So every data chunk uh, with uh, 130 mega, uh, 123 bytes will temporarily start in this buffer and then will be passed to OTA routines. Uh, it's important to mention too uh, that if a client stops sending any data and remains in this state for five seconds, this time is set. Uh, here, it's the timeout for firmware chunk. Uh, the S32 will consider all firmware chunks have been received and will end the OTA process. And we start to validate the firmware received so far. And if everything goes, goes well, OTA is finally done. Well, as we can get the overview of this code, uh, now it's time to see this demonstration running. Here, as you can see, I have a VS code with debug message from the device on the bottom side of the screen. And S32 uh, is using the firmware, as I showed you before, uh, version 1.0, okay? So it's the very first firmware flashed to the S32, simulating the firmware flashed in the manufacturing process, okay? And here, I have a Hercules software. I will clean the, the window for you. Uh, this software uh, is a TCP or ODP and serial terminal, very useful for testing this sort of things. Uh, as my S32 here and my computer are already connected to the same router and same network, the next thing to do is to connect Hercules, this client, TCP client from Hercules, to the SP32, which contains the server side of the socket connection. Now I'll send you, uh, I'll send to SP32 from my computer some firmware. First, I'll connect Hercules to the SP32. I will send firstly uh, the good firmware, which is uh, which means the firmware that contains no critical issues. Okay, so the this firmware version is 1.2. Uh, the firmware is start to be sent. This takes some time to complete. Let's wait for some seconds. Okay. OTA processes has been finished. S32 has rebooted, as you can see here in the message. I will I will get a little deeper. And as you can see. The current firmware version is 1.2, means meaning that OTA process worked fine, okay? And uh, we can also verify this by checking the, the, the offset. The offset now is this number, which means checking the partition scheme, this number here, which means the firmware, we were at the factory partition as we seen before, and now we are running from OTA one partition, okay? Meaning that uh, uh, OTA occurred successfully. Okay, now let's check the, the bad side or the not so good firmware to update to the S32. Well, as we can see, we are now currently running 1.2 version. Now I will update the 1.3 firmware version to the S32, which means a bad firmware. 
this bad firmware simulates a critical issues to to this SPR2 and will force it to reboot before uh, flashing the uh, marking the partition as valid. Okay, so it forced back if uh, rollback will force the firmware back to 1.2 as we'll see a further later. I'm sending it. It takes some time to complete. Okay, as you can see, a lot of messages rolled over here, and let's check what happened. First, after the OTA process, we can see the S32 version is 1.3, okay? So it started, and suddenly something happened, something, something bad happened, and S32 restarted before marking the partition as valid, okay? So rollback feature kicks in and force the 1.2 version back, which was the last stable firmware version flat to S32. So rollback feature is successfully working in this demo. And after updating a bad firmware, it restored, it, uh, the S32 was restored to the last stable firmware version flattening it. Let's now check the uh, websites and books use it as references for this presentation. First, uh, as website references for this presentation, I use the SPIDF repository, okay, which uh, URL you can see there, and SP32 official documentation. Uh, so these two references, I use it as website references. And from the book perspective side, uh, the book SP32 com IDF ou Guia Profissional from Brasilia author uh, José Moraes was also used as references for this presentation. This presentation is now ending. Uh, I would like to thank everyone who watched it. Uh, please feel free to ask questions uh, in the Q&A section. See ya.